engineering really is all around us. As you can see, thus far in the course, we've done quite a bit to introduce the material. We've covered force vectors and moments, both very foundational concepts to understanding the world around us. What we'll do now is a quick review and kind of work with a somewhat realistic real-world problem where we'll look at a crane, which are commonplace in construction sites all around the world and are pretty much every five feet at the University of Maryland, given how much it's changed since back in the day when I was a student. Let's see how the example combines some of the concepts we've talked about and review some of the things that we've learned thus far. Now that we've done all these different examples in class, I want you to look at the following example and try and figure out what moment is caused by each of these forces about the pivot point of the crane A. Now, pause your video and think through for force F1, F2, and F3. Is it going to be easier to use the first method of F perpendicular times distance, or is it going to be easier to use line of action? I'll give you a hint. It's possible to use both simultaneously, and that may be helpful here. So pause your video and try and figure out the numerical value of the moment caused by each one of these forces about pivot point A at the bottom of the crane. All right, let's now look at how to solve this problem by doing a couple of animations on the PowerPoint slides to help illustrate whether you're using line of action or the first method to solve. Let's look at F2 first. F2 is already vertical. Usually, as I was saying, when your force is vertical or horizontal, it's going to be easier to use line of action. So in this case, I've drawn a blue dotted line that goes up and down, and we can slide F2 all the way down to the bottom. And when we do that, we see that we can take the perpendicular distance of 8 meters. So we're good. We've got 75,000 times 8, and that's going to be our answer for that one. Now let's look at F1. F1 is at an angle. Usually when F1 is at an angle, that means that we want to take the components of that force and see if we can solve for the moments. So when we take the two components, we get the following. We get one in the y and one in the x. Now if we look, neither of these forces is perpendicular to point A yet. But here's where my hint comes in handy. You can now use line of action to actually slide these two forces, F1 sine 30, the x component, and F1 cosine 30, the y component, you can slide those along their line of actions until they become perpendicular to the pivot point of point A. So that's how you would do F1. You would actually use a combination of both the original method with components and line of action to solve. But what about F3? Well, F3 is actually the easiest of all of them to calculate because guess what? F3 passes through point A, so it does not cause any moment at all. So, when we look at our solutions for this problem, as I just said, M3 goes through the point. That's a big old zero. It's not going to cause any moment. M2, using line of action, is 75,000 times 8 meters. And M1Y and M1X, when slid along their respective lines of action, gives you the following calculations right there. That F1 sine 30 times the height of 30 meters, and F1 cosine 30 times the width of 15 meters. And when you do the math out, you'll get the following answers right here. And hopefully this helps to illustrate how, in a moment's question, it's always going to be useful to figure out whether you want to use the first method, the second method, or both, I guess technically the third method, using both of them together at the same time. Now what I'll show you is how you would have solved for the moment of F2 if you didn't use line of action. And I can tell you right now, it's not fun. So, what you could have done was you could have solved for L2, which is the distance between force 2 and point A. But again, F2 is not perpendicular to that, for that line. So you have to solve for the components of F2. When you do that, you'll find you have a perpendicular component shown in green and a parallel component shown in red. Now what you'd have to do is you'd have to do some extra trig, you'd have to solve for this theta, and you'd have to compute the perpendicular component of the green moment arm of F2, which will be F2 times cosine theta times L2. When you plug in all of the numbers here, you'll find that you'll get 75,000 times 8 over 31 times 31, which at the end of the day is 75,000 times 8, 
which is exactly the same solution that we just got by using the line of action in the previous steps. So there you have it. It's not always best to use line of action. Well, there you have it. That's the end of this lecture. And what we're going to be doing in the next unit is talking more about free body diagrams and how to solve for systems using both the things you learned in the force components lecture as well as the moments lecture to determine whether a static body is in equilibrium. And that's what we'll do next time. See you then.